All right, what's going on, guys? Try back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing my weekly review for this week's episode of The Walking Dead Season 11. This is for episode two now. Uh, it is uh, our chair on part two. All right, so I was pretty excited to go ahead and see this week's episode of uh, Walking Dead. It does sound like, and thank you guys for telling me, uh, each week AMC premiere is going to be airing on the episodes a week early. So if you haven't seen the first uh, episode for The Walking Dead Season 11 yet, uh, it'll be on... Um, uh, tonight on AMC, um, but I'll put the link in the description if you want to sign up for AMC Plus or AMC Premiere so you get all the episodes of season 11, uh, at least of the first uh, section of it, the first eight episodes, uh, a week early. Um, that way, you know, I'm kind of doing them based on that just because it, now AMC Premiere really messes up the kind of timing with everybody. But I do the reviews, you know, they're, every episode's a week early, and I'll give you the Amazon link so you can sign up for a trial. Or I think it's nine bucks a month after that. So the link will be in the description if you want to sign up for AMC Plus so you can watch all these episodes sort of on schedule with what we're kind of doing. Uh, it's the best I can do for now, guys. There's a huge discrepancy between, you know, uh, when. Um, you know, you're going to be able to see it on regular AMC and the regular airtime and a week ahead of time for every episode for people that have premieres. So I'm just going to try my best to, you know, do the reviews and, um, you can watch them after you've uh, after you've seen it. But uh, if you don't live in the States as well, to try the link and see if it'll work for you, even if you live in a, uh, a different country, and you can see if you can watch it now. Um, so this uh, second episode for The Walking Dead Season 11. So, uh, man, uh, this was a, a really crazy episode. I want to say that Season 11 so far looks nothing like regular Walking Dead to me. Like after watching it for so many years and everything, I know the series has changed a lot as they've gone through it. Through it. They've kind of upgraded their uh, video quality over these last, you know, uh, 12 years or so and um, have changed things up a few times. Um, but I feel like now it's just so far different from what it, you know, originally looked like and, uh, and looked like in earlier seasons. And this episode, uh, and the first two episodes really look totally completely uh different from almost anything we've seen so far in walking dead in this episode we get some awesome kind of environmental different uh shots and different pieces with uh the group daryl maggie's group uh and negan's as well where they're uh down underneath in the uh, river of woe they're kind of in the uh subway tunnel under washington uh, uh, DC subway train and all that and, and, and sewer uh, sections and different uh, like almost like uh, you know underworld labyrinth type of thing in The Walking Dead uh, you have Daryl he's kind of going around and different uh, different people getting stuck in different sections uh, a nice focus on Gage in this one who is kind of a, a, a C or D background sort of character he was involved with Lydia before and some of the stuff that happened with her um, but you know, he's never been kind of a forefront character. They did use him in this one, and this does contain spoilers, uh, and he, he does die in this episode in the subway train in what is probably the most brutal uh, death we've seen in The Walking Dead uh, since, as far as zombies are concerned or walkers are concerned, since, I want to say, Noah's uh, death, if you guys remember, where he gets absolutely ripped to shreds, ripped to pieces in the uh, turning uh, revolving doors. Uh, this one was similar to that. Uh, I don't know if I'd say it was worse or you know, better, but it was brutal. When you see the scene where he's being absolutely ripped apart, it was freaking brutal, man. Uh, so, <laughs> so that was pretty cool. So, um, oh my gosh. Uh, so uh, let's go scene by scene through this one. Uh, pretty, pretty awesome episode. So from last week's episode of Chair on Part 1, the season premiere episode, we had Maggie in uh, the spot where she was kind of stuck in the question of uh, what will happen since Negan refuses to kind of help her uh, up. And uh, I like kind of what they did with this. It was sort of similar to the thank you under the uh, under the dumpster type of situation but she goes under the subway uh, train and if there's one character to kind of steal from Glenn and to go sort of underneath uh, I think that Maggie is probably the best choice for that that you could uh, you could pick 
to have someone do a similar type of uh, maneuver to what Glenn did in order to survive. She does the uh, the same thing here, and then you can kind of hear her pounding away at a spot later on to let the others know she's underneath, so they can kind of pry her uh, pry her up, so she can kind of get uh, get out of there. There was also a pretty cool first person view where you see her and she's kind of down, and the walkers are sort of kind of piling up in, in and around her, trying to get her, and uh, it was just a cool shot. And there, there are some really cool angle shots in this one, like her and the, all the walkers are kind of coming, you know, coming on top of her from first person, and we. We find out, like, I, I think we all kind of knew Maggie was going to survive. I don't think they really tricked any of us. Uh, you know, did, was there anybody, leave a comment below if you did, uh, where you actually thought for a second that maybe Maggie would die at that exact moment or you saw Maggie's death and then were tricked later on. Like, I don't think anybody really would think that. Uh, but that was wicked cool. There were some awesome shots in this episode, like when Daryl comes kind of running through the subway uh, uh, train. You see him from the side angle with the gun. He goes up behind them and he's, he's shooting down. Down, you know making sure not to miss on each one as he's kind of coming up behind them and it, it was really cool man it was something like a uh, no way out uh, type of situation where they have to kind of fight their way through and you just have a ton of walkers uh, underneath there uh, you know in, in the sections with them closing them in and then them and then them trying to get out the Duncan trying to get out the one door it's kind of blocked and then they go back the other way and then eventually they kind of they kind of break through and get out but it was also cool the way the walkers were coming in they were killing them like in waves like they'd start they'd use the uh, the shotgun and after that the the bow and arrows for range and then they'd switch to the uh, the knives and uh, and go at them uh, you know uh, one uh, one at a time. Um, so it was really cool. But well, we have all that stuff, you know, going on. We do get the stuff at the Commonwealth where you get to see um, kind of them being screened. And we get to meet Stephanie in this one, which is also really great uh, for Eugene because he's been a long running surviving uh, character in the series. He's never had a love interest. So they did it with a television series version now. They've given him kind of that love interest for Stephanie. And they finished processing in this one, which is really good. And it does seem like they told the Commonwealth that they were on their own. Nobody caved, and it seems like to me, uh, even though Eugene did a good job acting, like he was really going to go go forward with it and give them all the information, he still didn't because he still didn't tell them about their settlement and everything. He uh, told them the story, told Mercer that he was basically, they were on their own and, and that whole kind of thing, which to a degree they kind of were. I mean, they sort of left when the uh, the whisper war was kind of going on so uh there's no telling for them that the group is even still alive they probably think they are most likely uh like they would defeat the whispers and they'd be able to make it but w if we look back at the time when they did leave i guess it wasn't guaranteed 100 percent that the group was going to defeat the whispers and beta and alpha and everything so um I'm pretty sure they're not aware that that has transpired while they've been gone. So the stuff at the Commonwealth was still pretty good. It was fun and everything. It was cool to see him meet uh, Stephanie. And it was cool to see his stuff with uh, Mercer because he's a long-running comic character we've, we're have we just getting to see now, you know, in, in The Walking Dead's final season. And so they kind of uh, finish uh, processing and go through West Point, he says, uh, to uh, Ezekiel. But it, it's, you know, it was, it, they're pretty cool scenes, but obviously well overdone yet again by the excitement of everything else that was going on with uh, Daryl and the uh, and the others. And, and I liked for those parts of the Commonwealth, mostly the, uh, the Eugene stuff with Stephanie Mercer, and then uh, Yumiko did have some kind of badass lawyer moments there where I think she kind of took the comic book version of Michonne's parts there with kind of, um, you know, showing how useful she can be and how useful they can be, and they've been granted access. So back to, uh, we go to the intro after the first person stuff with the subway. We get to see basically Gabriel, Alden, Negan. So um, Negan returns and you have Maggie come up and the question of whether or not she's going to kill him. She kind of pistol whips him and that's kind of what, what we see so far. But then she leaves Gage to be uh, devoured as well. Um, so she sort of does... It's, it's kind of, well, you know, Negan just leaves her. He probably could have helped her so easily, and that would have been all. But uh, Maggie does something similar with Gage to where uh, she decides to not not to allow him in because all the walkers would come in with him. So uh, it's not exactly the same situation, but it's kind of similar in that she doesn't. She decides not to help, too, which is what Negan had done to her earlier. So I'm not going to say it justifies what Negan did, but it sort of uh, maybe overshadows it because Maggie did end up surviving, and it was okay. We had some stuff with Daryl and Dog, who was kind of running off. And Daryl did get to see some cool sort of wall murals and uh, environmental stuff with this one, which I feel like has sort of... Um, 
maybe in the last year or two, I feel like the Walking Dead crew has kind of gotten more experience with this because, <laughs> because of what's happened in real life. I feel like they've gotten kind of maybe a real world lesson a little bit on how when society kind of breaks down and, and what happens as we've seen related to the uh, you know pandemic and everything, uh, how people act, how they tribe up, you know, some of the stuff, some of the stuff we've seen in and around has been kind of cool. I like the one with the uh, <laughs> the, uh, uh, the the class idea. I think Angela Kang describes it at the end if you have AMC Plus with the um, kind of a class a class struggle uh, underneath there and uh, some money there's some spotlighting on someone who has like a briefcase full of money and that being useless you know you, the idea like your, your money can't save you anymore that can save me I think that's Titanic right that, that type of thing uh, so you know when everything breaks down and how people how people behave it's cool stuff I just like to look at it you know I think there's one about truth and, and lies this kind of thing and liar right like all uh, oh, right Gage says it too liar too right is like uh, as he kills himself like governor stuff if you guys remember with the governor, he says, liar, and then to Rick, and then he <laughs> goes at, at Herschel. Um, I kind of feel bad about it now, especially since, you know, Scott's, uh, Scott's gone. But uh, it's, uh, you know, it's all good stuff. I think it's kind of made it even better because it's made it sort of like, it's made it sort of more real. Like the environments are kind of like more real. So I like what they're doing with that, and I hope they continue that, you know, throughout the season because it's sort of like, I feel like we have a better understanding now than earlier on in the series uh, as a culture and as a, as a society and, and the Walking Dead team as well too can kind of see sort of like more closer to what, how people actually do behave given those kind of events and given, you know, uh, uh, what happens there, class struggles, tribalism, um, you know, the, the deviation away from the importance of money gets gets reduced, right? Uh, when, when things like that are breaking down and everything's happening like uh, like that. So it's, it's really good stuff. I, I liked it all. And uh, again, you know, the series, just like I said at the beginning, really dark, some really dark, uh, dark shots and dark tones and everything. And it looking completely different than anything we've seen in Walking Dead before. Uh, you know, we're used to seeing the forest all the time and then, you know, walking through the woods, that kind of thing. And this is a totally different uh, environmental set for us to see. And uh, almost in some ways feels like a different, uh, it feels like a different show or, or it somehow feels like a movie at certain parts, like especially when Daryl goes through the side and he's shooting them in the back and whatnot. Um, that's a that's a that's one of the most badass scenes we've seen in all Walking Dead, but it looked like something you'd see out of a uh, a major blockbuster movie um, that you that you'd go to see in the in the theater. So the stuff with Gage was brutal, um, and uh, kind of like you know I think people are kind of turning on Maggie. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your comments below. How do you feel about Maggie right now? Are you kind of mad at her? Do you kind of feel like? You know, she's kind of, and then she goes, she's got this story she goes into about these guys, one guy that had chloroform and then three more, and then she sees like some women that had been, I guess, kept by them and they had a bunch of food. She goes into this story and it's just a bit, uh, I don't know, it's, it's super dark and it's just, it's just, it feels like in this episode, like, how did the Walking Dead universe get so dark so quickly? Because it feels like... It, you know, and the whispers were really dark as well, too. Uh, maybe I'm just out of touch a little bit, but it feels like what we see in this episode is an even darker universe than what we're used to for Walking Dead. But it's it's good. You know, it's it's really good. And, you know, this many years of show being on, for them to come back and kind of bring us these kind of episodes that feel totally and completely different from what we're used to, I think is, uh, is, is a good thing. It really is. Um, so... Yeah, all that's awesome. Love it all. Um, like I said, the cool action sequences where they're killing all the walkers and Daryl kind of comes through around. Uh, Dog as well, too. And uh, it's just awesome stuff. I did get worried at one point they might kill Dog off. I was like, oh, no. And then uh, so we go on through, you know, I guess that's all I'll really say about the, the zombies. There. It was just awesome. Stuff at the Commonwealth, like we said, is pretty good. Eugene reveals that he's a virgin, which is funny, right? <laughs> I forgot to mention that. Uh, really good stuff. And then we kind of finish things off. Them heading to what is uh, Arbor Hills, I believe is what she, uh, what Maggie had said. Uh, something like that to a supply depot near the radio tower, which makes me think of like the, the Gabriel comic book where he kind of is hanging off. And then we see a whole bunch of uh, walkers that have been kind of hung up all the way down. 
and then they get attacked. And I think Cole gets hit real bad, and his hand, I don't know if his hand's been cut right off. It seems like it. And the other older gentleman gets uh, uh, gets uh, shot with a with a bolt or an arrow uh, in the uh, in the head. So he's definitely dead for sure. So a couple of character deaths already this season, but they're not you know like like main front you know uh, standout characters. It's just that we don't have too many of those left right now. So a lot of them are going to be around. You know, are going to be like ones that you saw here, you saw there, that type of thing, but not at the exact forefront of the uh, the series. So. Oh, the grenade part, too, was also awesome with Daryl, where he kicks it back and it explodes. So it's awesome stuff. Very scary uh, episode. Oh, Tom and Jesse were the name of the two, so I, I kind of like that. That was cool. Uh, on the uh, the money and stuff with the story. So an amazing, I, I think an amazing follow-up episode. Um, you know, the it leaves us off another sort of cliffhanger point with the Reapers kind of coming in. They're very scary. It looks like Daryl and the others <laughs> and Meg, you're just going to have to, you know, uh, scatter, right? run away. Uh, they're pretty badass, man. Really, really badass. The walkers in the trees are really scary. And uh, it's, uh, again, just just completely different. That's what I would say about these first two episodes in a chair on part one and part two. Just completely different. Uh, they've come back with their final season with, it, you know, the, the intro is Walking Dead. The characters are, you know, the same. Commonwealth stuff is basically the same. Daryl, everybody. The characters are the same. But... For whatever reason, it just feels completely like a completely new show already. Uh, sad to see it's ending because it, it feel it, it's so good, right? It's like, damn it, this is so cool to see them do something completely kind of different and make it feel totally different than the usual. So I'm gonna give this episode a perfect ten out of ten. I thought it was amazing. Uh, yes, the Commonwealth stuff maybe wasn't so great, but it had a good payoff with Stephanie kind of coming in and Eugene had some good stuff there. Um, and you know, it just it just was incredible with the subway and all, all the walkers and then finishes off also at a high point with the reapers coming in so that's it for my review guys definitely check the episode as soon as you can uh if you don't have amc plus yet you kind of i almost want to say like you kind of got to get it you know because <laughs> it's going to be a week early or i guess you can watch the reviews a week later if you want to but um i can't wait a whole week every time guys it's like not every week i can't wait a week every week so we got to do it if you like the video please uh thumb it up below share favorite subscribe at the bottom left and let me know what you guys think about this kind of uh, uh, uh these visuals for the walking dead this kind of look for the walking dead and how you feel about it compared to you know prior seasons two or three years ago like during the whispers or before stuff with rick and and the old gang uh, compared to how it looks and how it feels now. This is completely different for me, and in a good way, because you got to change over time. You don't have a choice. That's it for this one, guys. We'll see you again soon for another. As always, this is Trev, and I'm saying peace. Later, guys. See you soon.